Hi there, I'm Avi and today I'll be showing you how to pass data between an Apple Watch and an iPhone. Let's get started. First thing first, what I need you to do is I need you to open any browser that you have. Safari, Chrome, Firefox, you name it. And what I want you to do is I want you to go to developer.apple.com. Okay, developer.apple.com. And if you haven't already, I want you to subscribe and sign up for the iPhone developer program. Um, uh, once you're here, go to Member Center, and in Member Center, it's going to ask you for an Apple ID. Make sure that you already have an Apple ID by now. So I'm going to put in my Apple ID credentials, my email, and my password, okay? And this is my account. So what I want you to do is on the left-hand side, you're going to notice Dev Centers, iOS, Mac, and Safari. Now, if you haven't um, subscribed or enrolled for the iOS developer program, please do that beforehand or right now because um, after we continue along, you'll, you'll require the iOS developer program to do anything with passing data between the Apple Watch and the iPhone. So if you don't know how, I'm going to show you by going to the Mac. So just follow me, okay? Press on Mac. And once you press on Mac, it's going to say, join the Mac developer program. So if you haven't enrolled for the iOS developer program, follow me, okay? So you're going to say learn more. It's now going to say Mac developer program, enroll now. So enroll now. Scroll down, hit continue. And as soon as you hit continue, it's going to ask you which Apple ID. I'm going to use my main Apple ID. I'm, a, I'm an individual. And now it asks you, hey, which program do you want to enroll? So it doesn't matter where you start from. You can start from the Mac developer program. You can start from the iOS developer program, but they both end up in the same spot. This whole page where it asks you, which program do you want to enroll in? As you can see, I've already enrolled in the iOS developer program. So for you, you just should just select the iOS developer program. It's not letting me because I'm already enrolled. But once you figure things out, um, Apple's going to send you an email. Hey, verify, blah, blah, blah. And soon enough, you'll be enrolled. So now we're at the stage where you have enrolled into your iOS developer program. So go back to your developer.apple.com, go to member center, iOS, and on the right hand side, you see this iOS developer program. Hey, nice job. So over here, what I want you to do is select certificates, identifiers, and profiles. Okay. And in certificates, identifiers, devices, blah, 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 go ahead and hit certificates for now. Doesn't really matter which one you choose. Go down to app groups. Okay. App groups is something very specific. Go down over here. All right, so now that you're in the app groups, what I want you to do is create a new app group, okay? And if you haven't realized already, to pass data between the Apple Watch and an iPhone, the best way is to use app groups. So what I want you to do is just add a new app group. Now it's gonna ask for the description and it's now gonna ask for the ID. So for the description, you can do anything you want. I'll do maybe trial app, so trial app. And for the ID, you can do something like group dot um, trial app. Okay. Something very simple like that. So I have my name as trial app and I have my identifier as group dot trial app. All right. So now if I hit register, it now says registration complete, go ahead and hit done. So as you can see, I now have three gra um, app groups. One is for location sharing. Another is a trial app that I've just now created. And I want, and I've created one more, which is a dice roll storing one. So now that we've created our app group, let's go ahead and actually create our Xcode project. So I am going to open up Xcode. Let me actually minimize this. Welcome to Xcode. Let's go ahead and create a new Xcode project. So I will choose application, single view application and product name. Let's call this trial app. Trial apps fine actually and hit next. Now it's going to ask me, where do you want to save it? So I'll just create it in my Apple watch projects. So I have a folder for that. And we now have our Xcode project. Fantastic. So I am going to minimize this. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to add a target. So this target is going to be for the watch kit app. If you've already had some experience with the watch kit, you know how this runs. So iOS, Apple watch, watch kit app, hit next. And do not include a no notification scene or glance scene because that is not at all important to us right now. Okay. So organization name Avinash, language Swift, everything looks good. Hit finish. 
So now that we've created our Xcode project, the next thing we want is basically pass data. And the way we're going to do this is it's going to be very simple. All I'm going to do is as soon as the Apple Watch build loads, I'm going to pass a number to the iPhone build. And then when I open up the iPhone build, it's going to display a number. So something very simple. Now I'm going to go to my interface.storyboard and I never like keeping my background black. I'm not sure that's just something that that's me. So I'm going to change the color to maybe a red. Okay. And the number I want to pass is I'm just going to create a label. Add the label in uh, horizontal center, vertical center, and I'm gonna just gonna put a number. So the number that I want to pass to the iPhone is gonna be a nine. Okay, you can pass whatever data you want. Just follow this video for now. Okay, so the number we're passing is nine. What I want you to do is now go to your trial app WatchKit extension, and if you open up your interface controller, you have these three functions: awake with context, will activate, and did activate. So the awake with context function is called as soon as your whole display loads. Okay. So over here is where we can actually pass the data to the iPhone. And the way this, gonna, this is going to work is we're going to be using a concept called NS user defaults. Okay. So stick with me for now. I'm going to write three lines of code and then I'll explain what the three lines do. First line var defaults is equal to NS user defaults in brackets sweet name. Okay. Right now I'll just take a look at what the sweet name does. Returns an NS user defaults object initialized with the defaults for the specified app group. Remember, we are using app groups to pass data between the Apple Watch and the iPhone. So here it's now asking for hey, which app group do you want to use? Opening up our Chrome, what was it? The app group ID is group dot trial app, and that's the exact one we want to use. So I'm going to close this. It's going to ask, Hey, what string? So group dot trial app. It's that simple. So basically we've initialized an instance of that app group. And now we can add variables. We can add objects with key stuff like that. So we have the defaults. Now what we can do defaults dot set an object. Now there's set bool, set double, set float, set integer. So since we're passing the value nine, what we can do is set integer. What's the value nine for key? Hey, what's our key? Um, passing int. Okay. So right now it's giving me an optional default. I want to say, Hey, there is going to be a value for the defaults. And now before we stop or end the programming for the Apple watch, you're going to synchronize. So defaults, dot synchronize writes any modifications to the persistent domains to disk and updates all unmodified persistent domains to what is on disk. Basically all it does is it updates the app group so that you have, um, a key called passing int whose value is nine that you can now access via the iPhone. So fantastic. As soon as our Apple watch bill loads, this code will execute and we'll have a key in the app groups called passing int with our um, value nine. Okay, cool. So next up, what do we want to do? Well, we want to access this in our um, iPhone app. So going to our first of all, main dot storyboard of our trial app, I will make the width as um, compact width and any height. This is just something I do. Now I'm going to change the background color to a nice yellow. And I need to add one label. So just one label. That's it. Um, let me center the text and let me remove any text that's there right now. So what I want to do is let me first add an IB outlet and the constraints for this label. So add missing constraints. There we go. Constraints are there. And then opening up the assistant editor, all I'm going to do is drag and drop this label into our code. And I'm going to call this int label. So this will have our integer um, value. Now in our view did load function, the first line is going to be the exact same as we wrote for the Apple watch. Basically we just want an initialization of our, um, NS user default suite name. So var defaults. And again, you can call it whatever you want. It can be apples. It can be var bananas. We're just creating a variable which holds the app group data. So var defaults is equal to NS user defaults. And then in brackets, sweet name, what's the sweet name going to be? It's going to be the exact same one group dot trial app. All right. 
Now what we can do is we can say defaults.int for key, integer for key. And all this does is returns the integer value associated with the specified key. So let's go ahead and put in our key. What was it? I actually forgot. So let me just take a look over here. It was passing int. Okay. So the key over here will be passing int, passing int. Okay. And I want to set this value as an, you know, as a variable, you know, so I'm assigning the value of the key passing int to another variable. So var integer being passed, integer being passed should be equal to defaults.integer for key passing int. All right. And now, last but not least, we want to set our labels text as the integer being passed. So if you've worked with labels at all, it's actually quite simple. Int label dot text is going to be equal to um, integer being passed. All right, let's save this. Do we have an error? What does it say? Nope. Let me build this. Make sure nothing is um, going wrong. So it's building the app. And if the build does succeed, let's go ahead and run it. And the way I want you to run it is make sure you're running the trial app watch kit app first. Make sure that's the active scheme. And then once you've done that, all you have to do is open up the iPhone app in your simulator. So I'm running the Apple Watch app. My iOS simulator has just popped up. This is my Apple Watch. This is my iPhone. Now, as soon as this loads and the Apple Watch appears, the nine appears, then I want to open up my iPhone app. So it looks like it is taking some time. So if you don't know about this neat trick, stop your build and run it again. And that speeds up things immensely. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, stopping my current build. And then I will run it again. All right. So right now, as you can see, we have our iPhone app that just popped up. Our trial app is over here. That's fantastic. And the next thing is our Apple watch should now load pretty soon. There we go. Now our Apple watch has loaded. So right now what's happening in our code is, that first three lines of our Apple Watch code has been executed. So it's used our app groups, it has set the value, and it's been synchronized. So right now, as you can see, it had lost connection. Sometimes bugs like these happen, don't worry. So now that that's done, and once the nine loads again, all we want to do is open up our iPhone app. All right, so now that our Apple Watch app is loaded, let's open up our trial app and we get a zero. So you're probably wondering to yourself, why isn't this working? I mean, we've done everything correct so far as per you know, and the thing that we've forgotten is we haven't set the app groups in our build settings. So what I want you to do is go up to your project trial app, go to your, um, one sec, go to your iPhone app and go to build. There is one, I believe it's capabilities. Yes capabilities and what I want you to do is turn on app groups and you can read a little bit about app groups does it allows access to group containers that are shared among multiple related apps so I'm gonna turn on my app groups and it now says hey select a development team to use for provisioning so I'm gonna use my own and hit choose so as soon as you do that it should now turn on our app groups so where is it app groups has this been turned on adding the app groups entitlement and now it's asking us hey which app group do you want to use for this app so we've already created the group trial app make sure you select that so good job now that we've set up the app groups for the iPhone build we have to do the exact same thing for our Apple watch build so I have now changed the target to trial app watch kit extension and if you go to your app groups over there and turn that on it's going to ask you again, hey, which development uh, team do you want to use for provisioning? I selected mine again, and now it's asking us which app group do you want to use? I'm going to use the group.trial app. So now that we've actually set the app groups for both the WatchKit app and for the iPhone app, if you run this again, it should now work perfectly. So the app has run. The iPhone build will now go back to the home screen. And we should now see a nine pop up on our Apple watch. There we go. I'm going to open up our trial app. Fantastic. So guys, you have now successfully passed data between your iPhone and your Apple watch. It's very simple. First step is 
create an iOS developer program license. Next step, create an app group. So give it a description, give it an ID, make sure you remember what the ID is. Next, when you're trying to pass data between your iPhone and your Apple Watch, make sure you have app groups turned on for both the iPhone and the Apple Watch. After that, going to our code, we have to create an instance of the sweet name app, and then we have to set the integer for a key or set the data for a key and then we synchronize. And then while trying to read the data, all you have to do is you have to say um, integer for key or there's many different options. You have defaults dot, maybe it's um, object for key, maybe it's a uh, um, float for key, stuff like that. So play around. If you have any questions, please drop a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Please like, share, subscribe, and I hope to see you in one of my other videos. Thank you.